Welcome to Press Play, the Street Cred podcast with Elena Krasdow, yours truly, and Jimmy Moak from Street Cred PR. In this podcast, Jimmy and I will welcome industry leaders, journalists, influencers, and friends of the firm to shed some light on who they are and the various twists and turns that led them to where they are today. We're grateful to have you listening in, and we hope you enjoy the show. My name is Elena Krasnow. Welcome to Press Play, the Street Cred Podcast. I'm so grateful you're here. I'm the editorial manager and client brand evangelist at Street Cred PR and your host for today's show, along with co-host and managing partner, Jimmy Moak. We will break down the show into two segments, Press, where we dive into all the hard news about our guest's life and their professional goals, and then Play, where we have a little extra fun with it. Today, we are so excited to be joined by none other than Tim White, Chief Partnership Officer and Co-Founder of the beloved estate planning firm, Wealth.com. To give our listeners a little more background on Tim, he is a highly accomplished sales and business development fintech executive with a strong track record of managing global partnerships and cultivating strategic relationships. Prior to co-founding Wealth.com, Tim served as Chief Partnership Officer at EmailAge, a global fraud prevention provider. Under Tim's leadership, channel revenue was consistently the company's fastest growing revenue stream. As part of Tim's responsibilities, he cultivated the company's strategic relationships, including with LexisNexis Risk Solutions, which subsequently acquired Email Age in 2020. When Tim is not on planes, traveling to events, and meeting with partners, he is spending time with his wife, son, and dog, often hiking the Sonoran Desert Mountains near his home in Scottsdale. Tim is an avid runner, but equally enjoys nothing more than movie nights at home with his family. Tim, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lena. Really excited to be on the call, uh, the show today. It's going to be awesome. Welcome, Tim. So pumped what? to have you here. We are oh, thrilled to have you. If we can contain your energy into one hour, we're going to do our very best. <laughs> Jimmy and I are so excited to have you here. Something, um, something we talk about in media training, Tim, is matching the host's energy when you are the guest. That is going to be very hard for us as hosts to match your energy, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Oh, you guys are the best. You guys are the best. Super flattering. Love it. Um, I'll try to tone down the energy just a bit. No, don't don't you dare. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you dare. Um, Well, before we fully dive into your story, if you've been listening to the pod, you might be aware that we're going to ask you a really important question which is what did you have to learn for lunch today and where can Jimmy and I get some? Because the vibrant energy you bring to the table is definitely something I think we could all use more of. Uh, espresso. A lot of it. That's what I have for lunch. <laughs> kind of espresso. No, no. All kidding aside. What did I have for lunch today? I had a kale and quinoa salad mm. uh, with blackened salmon. Um, That's amazing. Actually, yeah. Pretty good. Right. I, I was, I matched what my, uh, partner was eating. So, um, but it was great. It was great. It was a nice lunch. The last time I ran into you and you were eating lunch, you also had salmon, which you recommended to me. This was at Nitrogen's Fearless Investing Summit and I had it and it was amazing. So I might have to copy your lunch next week because I trust you already. I am like a firm believer in omega-3 and that's like, (laughs) this is a whole nother topic. And I don't think we have like three hours reserved, but like anytime that you can eat it, especially from the natural source, from the ocean, definitely do it. Um, But anyways, uh, I don't think this is like a health and longevity session, is it? Well, quick follow-up, fish oil (laughs) pills. Do you take us? I absolutely do. Get your EPA, DHA. What happens when when the burps come at, from those Ooh. fish oil pills? Like, hey, oh, it man. happens. Come on, you can, it <laughs> yeah, does. Yeah, it, 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 you got to let it rip. You just go you, for it. You, you know, can you get burp. You can get burpless <laughs> fish oil pills. I can't believe it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 one drawback. But um, but I think the benefits outweigh the burps. <laughs> <laughs> oh Love my it. goodness. I feel like we, you know how people say this is not financial advice. Jimmy and I need a disclaimer that says this is not nutritional advice. Neither of us are nutritionists, but we do seem to start the show every morning with this section where we pretend that we are. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump into the good stuff. Tim, we want to get to know everything. So we'd love to start by allowing our listeners to just get to know you a little bit better. Tell us a bit about your background, where you're from, and what led you into the world of finance. Oh my gosh. I mean, background, where do I start? Well, I'm born and raised in the Valley. I, uh, I'm a little bit of a desert rat here, still live in the Valley, which I absolutely love it. If I just go way back, 
Wow. The start um, right out of school, believe it or not, I, I actually, I worked in super yachting. Can you believe it? So I lived, I, I lived in Europe servicing super yachts um, all the way to Holland, Germany, throughout the UK. Uh, trade shows were in Monaco, Caribbean. Absolute blast. Um, just how did I get there? I have no idea. I went to a ASU, closest uh, body of water is at Tempe Town Lake, and it's absolutely toxic. I mean, like three. Oh, gosh. So how, how did I get in yachting? I don't know. But um, yeah, it's interesting. Like you look back in your career and it's just a, you know, a bunch of zigzags and forks in the road. And then then you're at your next venture. Um, but, I, you know, I've been always in startups, love startups, love the startup life. I love grinding it out with teams. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just love wearing, you know, different hats and, you know, the problem solving that goes on. Um, I don't think I'm a good fit for large organizations for multiple reasons, but, um, but yeah. And then on the, on the FinTech space, I mean, I mean, you, you covered it. I mean, worked in, 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 in multiple different FinTechs, had a, had a really successful exit, and, you know, I'm really excited what we're building here at Wealth.com. It's been an absolute blast. Um, the team is incredible. The energy is fantastic. Um, I think we have an, a, a, just an amazing mission. It, you know, I can't say enough. So, um, you know, looking back in my life, I think it's just a, a crazy, crazy, crazy story. And I'm just blessed to be here today. We've got to hit rewind for one second. <laughs> we, we can't just mention super yachting and then jump <laughs> off into wealth. Yeah, so, so I didn't make a leap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as someone who's never owned a, a boat, I do understand that when it's a uh, a small Boston whaler or even a yacht that maybe someone that would be high net worth could afford, not something that a ultra high net worth person would be buying, because uh, that is the land of super yachts, I guess. Uh, tell me this, when it comes to super yachts, is it true that the there's two great days when you buy one, or, or when you are an owner of one, when you buy it, and then when you sell it? Or when it comes to super yachts, are you so damn rich that it doesn't even matter because you can afford the $30 million a year upkeep on these on these uh, vehicles, you, you, you're so damn rich. I mean, it, it is. It's just wealth upon wealth upon wealth. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I'll tell you. Um, I was in Monaco. We were young in our career. We went to um, showboats. Right, it was one of the publications, and they had um, a party, and they were serving freely. I mean, this is like open bar. Louis the Fourteenth. Louis the Fourteenth. White glove. You know, and I'm with my young colleagues, and this is obviously early days, and we were taking those shots like it was Jaeger. It was what, just what like, does that go for a bottle for I, those oh, of us that have no idea? Infla inflation now? I mean, I have no <laughs> idea. It must be twenty thousand, maybe fifty. I don't know. It's crazy. I mean, it's nuts. Um, I'm not in the market, so I haven't been shopping for Louis recently. <laughs> I mean, One. but uh, but yeah, but no, just going back to it. Yeah, I mean, the, the wealth is absolutely insane. I mean, when people talk about yachts, they talk about West Coast. I'm like, no, 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 not not like Westport, Westport boats. You know, we're talking wow. about you know helicopters and you know oligarchs from Russia, and you're talking about Google, and you know they have so much money they don't mind burning you know, 10% on just upkeep and management of the yacht. You know, it's just, it, it's unreal, unreal. One other quick aside, and I know we have a show to stick to, but I follow on Instagram these canal canal boats. Have you seen these that go through all throughout Europe? And they're like the long, thin boats that you could live on and take through all the various canals of, of France, Germany, or... Do you know what I'm talking about? Or is this just something weird that I stumbled upon and, <laughs> and dream about when I have I mean, I, I've been out of the boat market for a while. I mean, I, I can kind of <laughs> put it together and and I and I believe you um 100 percent that these exist. But no, I mean I'm not I'm not too familiar, but I but I imagine there's quite a few of them. <laughs> All right. We'll we'll do some research and prep uh your return Absolutely. appearance well, so that we can I... concentrate on that. I want to go back to something else you said, which segues us perfectly into my next question about the successful exit that you and your present colleagues enjoyed. And now you're all together again. So we really want to know about how that all went down and you know how that sudden increase in resources for you changed your perspective on your life and your career path, but also how you all came back together at Wealth.com. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, it, uh, honestly, well, it, it started in 2012. So our executive chairman of wealth.com was the CEO and founder of, of Email Age. I was fortunate to join the team and um, I led our partnership strategy. Uh, the company was just an absolute blast. It was fun. The culture was high energy. We had teams across the world, Brazil, Singapore, Sydney, London, you know, got to travel, meet other cultures, which is absolutely you know, just like a highlight. I always say like the journey needs to be as enrich enriching as the event. Um, mm. right. Um, but, but we were all driving for a common goal and, you know, I looked over partnerships. So the partnership side of the fence, we had Amex, Visa, MasterCard, Lexus, Nexus, of course, who ultimately acquired us. We had so much inbound interest because we were just the definition of hyper growth, right? Cash flow positive. Um, we had so many inbound potential buyers that we ended up running a process with FT partners. And so maybe some of your li listeners know FT, they're absolutely incredible fintech focused bankers. Mm. And um, the process took about a year. And then and then we sold uh, sold ultimately the Lexus. I think the, the dollar amounts public, but uh, but yeah, it was it, it was awesome. Big celebration, but it was it was odd though, Elena, to tell you the truth, because in my mind over the years and just grinding it out and e eating up weekends because you're traveling internationally, but it's all worth it. I always had this vision that, you know, whatever it was Amex or MasterCard that ultimately buy us, like there would be a cake and we'd be cutting the cake and celebrating at the office. Yeah. When we celebrated at the office, it was just myself, Ray, our, C our CTO, our CFO, and our chief product officer, chief strategy officer, because no why? It was COVID. It was the beginning wow. of COVID. So nobody wow. was there. It was so surreal. We were tearing down like our office. We were not even like hugging or anything like that. We're doing like, you know, wow. the old school shoulder, I mean, elbow bump. Um, but uh, but yeah, so, so, so we sold the business. And honestly, it was really a, a bit scary even heading into ultimately the, 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 the sale of the company. You know, I, I remember, you know, during during that time when they signed the merger agreement, I was sweating it out. I thought, oh, my gosh, this thing going on in, in Wuhan, like, is this going to disrupt the deal? It ultimately didn't, of course, um, but it, it, was, it was definitely, you know, a scary time, a lot of stress. Um, of yeah, but then post uh, the acquisition, it was actually, um, you know, Ray Carvalho, our, our executive chairman, he kind of uh, brought, you know, myself and then. You know, a dear friend of mine who's the CEO, Rafael Laurel of Wealth.com, and he was our, our chief uh, technology officer of Email Age. He, he asked us to come over to his house to have some coffee. And we, we had coffee together. And he said, I have an idea. Mm. Um, uh, and he, and he kind of slid right in front of us a two-page document, which called, was called Wealth.com. And um, it was really high level. It's this vision document. I just remember sitting there and looking at, at Ray, looking at Roth and being like, I'm all right, I'm all in, let's do this. Yes. And, and the reality is this though, he could have slid across an idea called toasters.com and said, guys, I want to go into the toaster business. And I would have been like, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we, we had so much fun working together. I mean, I, I consider uh, Raphael one of my closest friends in the world. And so to be able to to do something again together, build something together, you know, with all the lessons learned of the previous venture, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sign me up. And so um, we ended up running a, a Series A very early on. Um, and our Series B investor from a previous company was like, hey, I work with this team. They're amazing. We're all in. And it was basically based off of a pitch deck. So we ran a $16 million round. And you know, here we are today. And we're one, if not the fastest growing estate planning technology, servicing and financial advisors in the space, the most comprehensive solution. And it's it's been a crazy journey. Wow. So, well, the so people tell me making, this. Let me just say, the people making toasters are lucky you decided to go okay. into estate planning because they Red would be out of mind. money by now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. the, the true story is this. We all bought our plans. He had wealth.com. I had toasters.com. I can't believe what Roth, I can't remember what Roth had. Obviously, I lost. I think we would have destroyed the toaster market. I You're going to do something so with that disrupted. someday, no doubt. You could have leveraged AI and machine learning to predict how how brown you want your uh, bagel, but here we are in the state <laughs> planning. So, yeah, those those others in the toaster business would be burnt 
so to speak. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Love it. So tell me this. Love it, Jimmy. You had this vision doc, Tim. When when that vision doc, the two pager, was put in front of you and Roth. What does wealth look like today, and how does it compare to what that vision doc was over that uh, cup of coffee? How much has changed, or how or how close have you kept? to the original vision. Just one. I'll tell you this pretty damn close to the original vision, to be totally honest with you, because look, we are all at home. Life was changing. Asset complexion changes, obviously with the liquidity event. And, you know, we're experiencing it firsthand, but we're also experiencing it through our former colleagues, right? Because everyone had ownership stake in the, in, in, in email age, but Ray's situation, right? He was moving States. His life was changing. And so this idea of building an ecosystem that's living and breathing just as much as a person's life, like that is the core wealth.com today. I think the one thing that's a bit unique is the fact that like our go-to-market strategy. So our go-to-market strategy was quickly, I think, refined to go after the problem statements of financial advisors, right? And it was not to teeter in or touch into direct to consumer. It was like, we are all in because we believe, and the data proves it because we ran a study that financial advisors are the number one influencer in a person setting up their estate plan. Number two is their family. So there's really not an awesome go-to-market strategy going through the family, but there's an awesome go-to-market strategy to go through a financial advisor, right? So- and and how many of those advisors do you think are really bringing this up with the with the end client? Not counting your c- current partners and clients of wealth, but I'll tell you, I have a financial advisor, and with three years of engagement between us, it has yet to come up. It has yet to well look at. I think you need to get another financial advisor because it, it really is two sides of the same coin. At the yeah. at the end of the day. And, yep. and um, you know, Dr. Preston, you know, Pres- um, we, we, we met at uh, Schwab. I mean, we, we, we've known each other, but he said something that was really powerful to Danny and I. When we were at your event, by the way, the karaoke event, which was awesome. But, um, but he said, you know, it, estate planning is love. It really is love. I think people are like, oh, I don't want to think about death. It isn't death. It is love. Right. I mean, I, I, I'm a father. And it crosses my mind all the time about the legacy I'm leaving behind for my son, William, all the time. And, it's a, and it is also a source of pride, right? And so um, a financial advisor not touching on the subject to me is just malpractice, to be totally honest. When we've looked at the data, though, of the financial advisors out there, in some way, shape, or form, they are, 60% are, are, are talking about estate planning, at least at a, as, as a minimum. So the market's massive, massive. Um, which is really exciting for wealth. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, we're all bearing witness to the democratization of investing and growing accessibility of financial advice for the average person, which is a beautiful thing. But to the point of the conversation we're having now, some advisors are still falling short when it comes to delivering comprehensive advice that's also inclusive of an estate plan. And Wealth.com has come in to save the day, so to speak. And you've already spoken to this a little bit, Tim, but out, continue to outline for us, like, what is the problem that Wealth.com dreams of solving? And if you can elaborate any further on the inspiration behind founding the firm, I love that you connected your personal story to that. And I don't know if there's like a shared team story that goes along with that as well. Well, I'll tell you, um, it really is about storytelling, but like I, I got a, we had a, a, a advisor that we brought on as a partner a couple months ago. And he sent this email and he's like, I just want to let you know, he had a client, um, a husband and wife that ended up utilizing wealth.com and setting up their estate planning documents. And it was in it was um, early October, right? Yeah. They ended up getting the doc signed, everything, everything. He ended up being diagnosed with cancer and he passed away. Wow. And he just said, I want to send this note to you just so you guys know the impact you're making in people's lives. Mm-hmm. And that was just like, Man, it was so powerful. I shared it with the company. And I that just gives you so much like purpose every day. Cause mm-hmm. like, you know, running a business is running a business. Like there's just operational things, there's this, there's stress, there's these systems, right. there's people, you know, you can be selling any type of widget. But at the end of the day, like estate planning, it's like it really is making a, an impact and and uh 
and and, and it has a, a, just an awesome good right to it. So yeah. um, that that's that's super important. Um, I think you now popping back into your question regarding you know what what we're trying to achieve. Look, at there is other providers in the space. A lot of them are a focus in direct to consumer, which is great. I, we we really believe that rising tides raise all ships, and we're firm believers. When it comes to financial advisors and the firms that we're working with, we work very closely with them. We are challenging ourselves every day. Today, we are absolutely 100%, without a doubt, the most comprehensive solution that's on the market, but we are not resting on that. You know, We are continuing to try to figure out ways to leverage machine learning and AI to enhance the experience uh, for the client, but also enhance the the experience of the advisor and mm-hmm. take needless wasted hours out of their day. And, and a perfect example of that is our release of Esther, which is the first AI assistant, uh, legal assistant for financial advisors to be able to use technology to read existing plans. I mean, that is part of, and it should be part of every advisor's onboarding process so to say, give me your state planning documents. Well, some of them don't have the skills to read those documents. Some of those documents, just, they're just so robust that it takes hours. So yeah. again, leading in, being able to leverage technology, giving visibility to, to, to these advisors, you know, whether it's going and sending a client off to a brick and mortar attorney where they don't hear back, they just go into a black hole or some of the other providers where they don't have visibility, understand what documents were created or a summary of yeah. those documents. All that stuff is available within wealth.com. I got to tell you, like, we are doing some really cool things. And if any of, you know, the different providers are trying to catch up to us today, just wait, because where we're going to be tomorrow is going to be absolutely next level. So, so Tim, that dynamic between wealth and the advisors you serve and the end investor, someone like Elena or, or myself, not only are you making this easier, but you're also allowing these advisors to do this at scale for a lower price point than what has been the industry norm via the brick and mortar approach. Do I have that right? You have you have that right, but also even with other providers in the space, because even in some of the other providers in the space, it, it's really slick to say you're a technology company, you know, do some flashy marketing, um, maybe have some simple interface, but in the background, you have all these choke points with human touch, human labor, right? And for mm-hmm. us, we're solving that through technology, right? We're able to provide documents that are on caliber of, you know, a Perkin Cooey document or McDermott, Will and Emery, which, you know, you just have thousands, thousands, tens of thousands, and being able to do that at, at scale through a solution and then be able to price and package that in a way that is completely economical for the advisor and the firm. I mean, we are super, I believe, disruptive when it comes to pricing Love it. because it is it's scale and it's tech it. you know you start to throw bodies at problems you can't do that and i think that's been a real edge for wealth.com absolutely and i love the heartfelt approach to it too because i think when the average person hears estate planning it sounds very dry and they don't really connect it to what it really means for your family and what happens after you pass and all of that. So I also really appreciate the anecdote you shared there too. I think that's such an important piece of this puzzle. And then you're solving it in the most progressive modern way you possibly can. Like how inspiring is that? It's awesome. And one thing too, like in technology, and this is the same thing with the previous company, there's so many providers that are set it and forget it, right? Set it and Mm -hmm. forget. And, And honestly, that's like the concern of most firms that we work with. And that's where we are able to break through. It's that When it comes to the human piece of this, we're building relationships with every advisor that touches our solution, with every advisor in every firm. I'm traveling to meet with one of the fastest growing RIAs, doing a massive rollout with Wealth.com. And one of our partner success team members asked, hey, do you have any availability? We just signed on a single advisor shop. Would you be able to stop by and say hello to them? I know that you're super busy. I said, absolutely. I'm going to move my flight. I'm going to say hi to them. We're going to go to lunch yes. because, you know, we're going to build the hearts and minds with every single advisor. And this is part of it. And we appreciate the business and the partnership. And so that's been really, I think, the heartbeat yeah. behind the technology at wealth.com. It's part of our go to market strategy. Our go to market strategy is really building evangelists um, out of our client base. I was just at the Altruist event this week and having having clients coming up to me and then selling other 
prospects at the event. Like that is powerful. And, and um, it's one thing that I always say that you need to really take care of, right? You build that. It's, I think it's building that type of brand and culture. It's beautiful, but it's also fragile. So you always need to care. It's just like a, a beautiful piece of art or porcelain, you know? Yes. And it's something that we really focus here at wealth.com. Absolutely. And speaking of the importance of partnerships and fostering strong relationships, which you understand better than anybody as chief partnership officer, um, we want to pivot a little and talk about the partnership between a firm like wealth.com and a PR firm. And what is to be gained by really treating your PR firm as a partner instead of just a vendor? And what does that look like? Well, I, I got to tell you, okay, a couple of things. I met Jimmy in Tampa. We had dinner together. I fell in love at first sight, I think. <laughs> oh. How romantic. No, that, that was mutual? I, I don't know. But in short, Jim and after, Tim. <laughs> Jim and Tim, you got it. Um, but 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 in then shortly after I ended up uh, meeting also uh Jason um is at the Snappy Kraken event in Las Vegas. But it, it was pretty clear that Street Cred was the right partner for us. They know the space, they know the game, and also um, it just seemed really natural, a, a culture fit for wealth.com, which is in incredibly important, right? But to be totally honest, we had a, um, a poor experience early on. Early on with wealth, we actually hired a PR agency and, and fired that PR agency. My wife, uh, her background's PR. So I know the power of PR. Um, but I'll say this there is, it's like 80 in, in BC. There is, before street cred and then after street cred. And I'll tell you, the partnership literally on day one was, and I hate to say cliches, but game changer. And please, like it's somebody, you can DM, DM me if there's another word for game changer, please. But like it works <laughs> right now. The, the, the partnership was absolutely game changer. And I'll tell you, I believe so much in partnerships that like, you know, th this is the same thing for wealth.com, same thing with email age, same thing with, with street cred. When your partners want you to win, that's when you're really succeeding, right? And so I want our, our, our true partnerships to win. And I remember reaching out proactively to Jason and Jimmy and saying, guys, if I can ever get on a call with a prospect and, 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 and sing the song of this partnership, I will please let me do that. I've done that for street cred and I've done that with our RevOps company. We have an incredible RevOps company. We have other partnerships. We have a ton of other partnerships, other providers. But those are the two that I would go out of my way, get on a plane to support. <laughs> but, That's but, amazing, you know, but, man. Thank you. But, Thank but, you but so one much, Tim. Too, oh, no, we, we love it. But one of the things that I love about it, th there's, there's been immediate trust in the partnership where that... It's not like we're driving this PR and we're asking for support. You guys are the extension of wealth.com, right? And we have discipline and follow your lead. And we take your advice, guidance, and direction extremely serious. And I think we've been following it pretty lockstep. And if anyone, you know, obviously, if you're listening to this podcast and, and you know wealth.com, you know who we are. A big part of that is, is the team that's on this call and the broader team at StreetCred. All right, stop. You're making this a commercial and that yes, is not. I just believe it. I just believe it. It's not. I mean, it, it's all on it. Like, look, you could put a lie detector test right on me right now. I'd be happy to do it. I I, I love this team. And I, and I, and again, I believe in, I believe in PR. I believe what the, the, the strength of it. And, and we're, we're seeing it in real time every day. So means the world to us, Tim. Thank you Thank so you. much for that. And semi-related, I guess I have to tell you that, I've been doing this for, I've been doing PR for now 24, 25 years. I have never, never once in my career seen a cheerleader slash champion of his own firm that matches the enthusiasm and passion that you have. Whether you are meeting someone for the first time, whether you're trying to um, encourage someone to step into your booth or you are screaming or singing or posing as if you are a member of the Beastie Boys on stage at Future Proof, nobody matches whatever you have inside. And my God, man, your next startup, you got to figure out how to bottle that energy and sell it because then you will have a fleet of those super yachts. <laughs> Oh my! I, I like. I'm, I'm glad we're not shoot, shooting video because now my face is going to be red. 
Um, it's true. I second everything that Jimmy said. It's such a pleasure to work with you. And it's such a pleasure to watch you work. Like the way that you bring your enthusiasm and your full self to the job. I will never forget when you came out on stage at Future Proof, full energy with the mic, with the sounds, with everything just blew us all out of the water. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm super flattered and humbled. And, and to be honest with you, it's um, it's just part of our culture here. I, I, yeah. I, you know, everyone here lives it and, 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 and breathes it every day. And we have an, you know, incredible, you know, engineering team and, and legal team and, and product team that doesn't have the, 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 what I think is an honor to, to represent the company with, with clients and partners and be at these events. So I got to represent all of them. And so that's why I need to be a source of the energy and enthusiasm and, and make them proud because you know what, I'm, Damn it! I'm I am very proud of of, yes. of this company and everybody here. And it, but it, honestly, and it, 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 it's fun. I've uh, to think about a company that you know now is synonymous with Van Shoes and and um, the Beastie Boys and and all these things. But to be attached to estate planning, is, it's pretty bizarre. <laughs> but skateboards and everything else. So you made the connections though. Just, you figured it out. <laughs> I, I, you know, if you would have told me that wealth.com. Um, vision document when we were having coffee that, you know, fast forward, we're going to have wealth.com skateboards attached to that. I would have said, what's in this coffee, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and toasters might be next. I mean, toasters, wealth.com branded toaster. I'm ready. Yeah, no, no, but it's, but it's great. You know, and honestly, like, I always feel like my, it's more of a dynamic duo between uh, myself and I'm on the road a lot with Danny Lorfink is our chief product officer. And we just have a blast uh, traveling together, working together. I feel like kind of this, uh, this tank, I don't know. I always say we're like tango and cash kind of throwing back to the eighties. You know, maybe I'm Kurt Russell and he's uh, Sylvester Stallone, um, but I got to rewatch the movie. I don't know if it aged really well, but, um, but it's, <laughs> but, but it's been a blast to be partnered with him doing this. So the movie's well, amazing. <laughs> it is amazing, right? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. It's a family movie night. It's it's not going to be like a Pixar movie or Marvel. We're watching Tango and Cash. With, with there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, although we've been having tons of fun this entire conversation, it is time to officially pivot to our play segment. And our first question, we've talked about a few options here already, but if it weren't financial services, what do you think you would be doing? Oh my gosh, if it wasn't financial services, what would I be doing? I mean, what would I want to be doing? I, I mean, I'd love to work in, in in music, in the business side of music. That would be really, 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 really cool. I mean, I, the I, ultimate hype man. I could see you there. A yeah, good, I mean, that would be awesome. You. <laughs> Thank you. No, I love it. I mean, I played in a band in, 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 in high school and college. I was actually the front man. So it's like, it was an easy uh, transition to, to jump in on stage for the, these uh, fintech uh, companies, especially wealth.com. So it kind of prepared me. Um, but I'm a, I'm a terrible singer. I'm a terrible, terrible singer, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that would be where I would probably lo- love to land. That would be great. That'd be fun. Really mad. We didn't have you, uh, do anything carry with karaoke oh, oh at, my, our, I, at our party. I, I, at I Impact. refuse. I refuse. And like, look, it, it was like the two thousands. It was like right before YouTube. So like, there's, you can't Google it. There's no, there's no YouTube videos. I'm safe. Nice. Uh, I, I got a couple of hard copy CDs and I will never share them. So there we go. <laughs> In the vault, safely In tucked the vault. away forever. Absolutely. Yep. Hilarious. Um, and I know we talked about this a little bit too in your bio, but tell us a little bit more about what you do for fun. What's the Sonoran Desert like? I'm a big environmentalist. I love to get outside. I love to hear about a new environment or landscape. So tell us, yeah, a little bit more about that. Oh my gosh. I, I, I'm, I'm a desert route. I love the mountains. Um, I, I spend my, like every weekend I'm on the mountains, like either it's hiking. Um, I've been really into mountain biking um, recently, totally all in on the mountain biking stuff, but I just love getting out in the desert, um, every morning, you know, to get energized, uh, you know, I'll hit the gym, but I'll at least get a bike ride. So I'll go out in the desert, take a little hill, a little bit about like a five mile ride, but like, I am able to see the, the sunrise. I typically like throw on some, like, you know, some cool acoustic country stuff, really into to Zach Bryan right now. So okay. Zach Bryan, or if you're listening to this, um, you're a big fan, um, wouldn't mind some uh, tickets backstage, but anyways, um, but, uh, <laughs> but he yeah, happens no, to no. be our number one fan. What's that? Zach is our number that's one fan heard. of the pod. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Of Absolutely. the number two podcast on Spotify. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I, I love getting out in the desert. I mean, look at um, the summers are tough, but if you get up early enough, you can make it happen. 
Absolutely. Um, okay. Closing question. Moment of gratitude. Give a shout out to someone in the industry you admire, maybe someone on your team or someone who you think might be listening. This is just your opportunity to make someone's day. This is a tough, this is a tough one. Okay. So let's see here. Um, or someone can, from can, your can, life. Can I, can, I have, can, I, can I have three? I have three. Yes. Can I have three? Okay. Three. Sure. All right. So <laughs> I'll say first Tyrone Ross. I, I love Tyrone Ross. He Tyrone is amazing. Shout he's, out to Tyrone. Shout, shout out to Tyrone. What one a, rope. He's incredible. So much purpose. He he like every time I get on a call, I don't even care. Honestly, even a text message, I'm like energized and I'm energized like to do the impossible. So like he's an incredible person. He should be studied. Um, and I am hundred percent believer that all of his tweets are going to age so well because he's right on Bitcoin. I'm going to say it here. He is right on Bitcoin. And then from there, I'd have to say this, um, Ann Rhodes, our, our chief legal officer. I, I, I love her to death. I, I, I admire her through and through. She speaks four languages fluently. She's a concert pianist. She is an absolutely incredible estate planning attorney. Absolutely incredible. And every time that she gets on a call, every time that she's on stage, I just sit there in awe. She is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Amazing speaker. She speaks with empathy. She's able to connect. Um, she's superhuman. And is um, a podcast host herself now. And I she believe. is a podcast host herself, the practical planner. So check it out. But um with her and Thomas Copeland, it's a great duo, fantastic duo. I'd have to say, I'd say a third. I, I, I mean, I, and not even like, let's say you're not even ranking or order, but like in action, I, I love Brian Hamburger. It, 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 I love Brian Hamburger. He, he's just, I, we're so blessed to have him on as a strategic advisor. I can't tell you enough. He, his impact is felt every day, every minute, but he's like the kindest soul you could ever imagine to work with. And so- yeah, th those three, I just sit back and like, if I could be even 5% of them, I would, I, I, I think I'm, I, I would say I'm a success. So great selections all yeah. around. Absolutely. Well done. You went for the, uh, the triple, so to speak. I went for the triple, the triple, yeah. the, triple. the trifecta. They, they, all, they all have, they all have their own strengths, but the reality is they're all, they're all Uber experts and, and, and they're just, you know, I, I think they all have their own individual followings, and obviously, Anne's is and Anne's building hers. It's it's they're amazing. I, I can't even hold, you know I couldn't even be assistant for those three. You know, well, definitely we, in the shadows. We count ourselves lucky to know all three of them, and um, yeah, your words about each one of them ring true to me. I know I do need to get to know Anne a little bit better, but there's going to be plenty of time for that in our shared future, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I, she's, she's going to become a household name before you know it. Absolutely. G one 30 minute zoom with her. And you're like, this is one of the smartest women alive. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Without uh, a doubt. Absolutely. Well, Tim, this has been lovely. Thank you so much for being on the show and to everybody who listened in today to our listeners. We hope that you are left feeling energized and inspired by this conversation be sure to write us via email at pressplay at streetcredpr.com to tell us what you think, ask us any questions, suggest any guests, or even to just tell us what you had for lunch today. Thanks again for tuning in, and we cannot wait to introduce you to our next guest. Bye. Thank you for listening to Press Play, the Street Cred podcast. Visit our website at streetcredpr.com and find us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Please don't forget to click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available. And if you enjoyed the episode, we'd love nothing more than if you would rate and review the show. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Street Cred PR. The content has been made available for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only. If you have questions about the show or Street Cred PR, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>